Readers, our next book of the day is The Girl Who Built an Ocean, an artist and argonaut in the true story of the world's first aquarium. An argonaut is somebody who goes on a journey, on a quest. Written by Jess Keating, author of Pink is for Blobfish, and illustrated by Michelle Mee Nutter. The Girl Who Built an Ocean. Remember, as you read and listen and follow along, be wondering things you're curious about. Notice everything that's going on. What connections are you making to the world, to other books we've read, to your own lives? And what reactions are you feeling? What surprises you? What things are you feeling? What do you notice about your character? And really importantly, from beginning to end, what do we learn about the girl? Does she change? What traits does she pick up? Let's see. And what predictions do you have from the girl who built an ocean? The soft fabric fell before her in shimmering waves, and Jeanne couldn't wait to dive in. In her father's hands, tangled thread and supple brown leather became shoes. In her mother's hands, bolts of cloth and bobbins of fiber became dresses. What could Jeanne create with her hands? Could she transform a pile of nothing into a beautiful something? Jeanne rolled up her sleeves and set to work. When she was 18, Jan journeyed to Paris to become a seamstress. She stitched, she sewed, she snipped her scissors, and created wearable works of art. Her hands were always busy, piecing and puzzling together color and fabric in captivating new ways. She made dresses for friends socialites, and even embroidered a dress for an Italian princess. It was as beautiful and bold as a sunrise. Women from far and wide wanted to wear Jeanne's creations. But adventure was calling. She sounds like that Argonaut. With her fabric, her scissors, and her new husband, Jeanne moved to Sicily. The Mediterranean was unlike anything she had ever seen before. It was a playground, a nursery, a galaxy, and a work of art. Jeanne wanted to know more about this enchanting world of salt water and sand. So she rolled up her sleeves once more, and set to work. Man, it doesn't it sound like when she really puts her mind to something? And when we talked about that word passion, all gear, discovering those passions, and look at that excitement as she dives into, even when it's something new. Also notice about our character, she kind of goes through life with such a curi- curiosity and dives into that too. She traded her scissors and fabric for seagrass, shells, and the endless shore. Chiffon and taffeta shifted into the foam at her feet as she walked in the sand. Pearls and sequins echoed the dappled sunlight on the horizon. Man, do I love Jess Keating's word choice. Dappled. Jeanne started to collect everything that caught her eye. She kept specimens of minerals and fossils in jars, preserved delicate butterfly wings on paper, and lined her desk with a rainbow of seashells, pebbles, and coral. Hmm. See all that wondering? Make any connections? Do any of you readers have collections of your own? 
Maybe if it's nature related, maybe it's not. But we could definitely make that connection, that passion we're noticing that she loves and learns and dives into learning. We've seen this before with previous characters. Hmm, which book of days are you thinking about recently? Oh, hmm, do you remember your readers diving into books and picking up notebooks? Pause and talk about it. What are you remembering? Because whenever Jeanne found a creature to study, she observed it carefully each day, taking notes and sketching its picture in her notebook. But there was one big problem. Hmm. Picture yourself there. What are you noticing? What might that problem be? Often, the animals Jan wanted to study would quickly say hello, then slip out of view in the deep, dark water. It is very hard to learn about an animal. If you can't see it. Yeah, that would be. wonder how she might solve that problem. How could Jan learn about these mysterious creatures if they kept swimming away? Good question. So she considered the puzzle in front of her, which is her problem. She didn't want to study preserved specimens and jars or lose her animals to the shadowy waves. What she needed was a way to bring the ocean to her. Jan rolled up her sleeves hmm, to design a solution using her hands, some glass, and her imagination. Do you see it coming alive on the page? Ooh. With these tools, Jan built the world's first aquarium. Wow. Look at those blueprints she has all over. All those sketchbooks. One aquarium was perfect for her study. Two others were built for the open water anchored at various depths on the ocean floor. With her new aquariums, Jan was able to observe how elusive animals survived and thrived. She watched as clams scooted, rolled, and leapt in the current, trickling bubbles to the top of the glass. She learned that octopuses use stones to prey open, tasty mussels. Shows kind of smart how smart that octopus is. But one animal fascinated Jan more than any other. The Argonaut. Oh, we know it had something to do with the journey. So if it had something to do with an animal, huh, one other. What do you think an Argonaut is? What do you think it looks like? What color do you think it was size? Hmm. Must live in the water, though, possibly. Let's find out. Argonauts have eight arms with strong suckers, two eyes, and a sharp beak. Ooh, some of these small octopuses had delicate, translucent shells. Hmm, that's a tough word, translucent. What do you notice about the shell? But some did not. And Jan wondered, where did the Argonaut get its shell? Many scientists believed that, like hermit crabs, Argonauts took their shells from other animals. But no one had caught them in the act. Jan wanted to discover the truth. So she rolled up her sleeves once more. I love how she asks questions and then she figures out the answers. She like searches for them because no one has them. Google doesn't have them. They have to go find the answers. What a great trait. Maybe we should carry that into our own days. So Jan collected Argonaut eggs 
from the ocean. Raising them in her aquariums, she took notes, made sketches, and observed them each day. Man, is she a hard worker. Some of Jeanne's young Argonauts didn't have shells. Hmm. Well, then suddenly they did. Poof. What happened, guys? Look at those cool tools she gets to use. She's outside, inside, outside, does a lot of drawing. The Argonauts weren't finding or stealing shells at all. They were creating them. Transforming what appeared to be nothing into a beautiful something. Jean even discovered they could repair their shells if they got damaged using special membranes in their arms. Wow, it's pretty incredible. Jan told other scientists about her discovery. Some people didn't believe her. It was unusual for women to study science, but Jan never gave up. Huh? Ding, ding, ding. Oh, do you have a text to world? Oh, no text to text? Pause here. What did this line? Some people didn't believe her. It was unusual for women to study science. But Jan never gave up. Who's that remind you of, readers? Talk about it. She shared her Argonauts 10 years of careful research and her incredible in aquariums. I would love to have seen these aquariums. What about you? The secret behind the Argonauts shell spread quickly from Italy to London and to the rest of the world. Look at everyone's smiles. Through a pane of glass, Jeanne had shed light on one of the ocean's oldest mysteries. But it was her aquarium, built with her hands, some glass, and her imagination that brought the ocean to us. It was her aquarium, beautiful and bold, that changed the world. Beyond the story. We have a copy of the book, so you can check this out and read a little bit more about her. I do see one line there that says she is now known as the first person to invent an aquarium that could be used to study live aquatic animals. Have you ever been to an aquarium? Talk about your experiences. Are you happy that we're able to build aquariums and learn about these creatures in our world? Or are you not? What's your opinion? Happy reading.